I actually fell in love with theater at such a young age. Um, my mom did storytelling in the schools and it was something that she always wanted to include a, a more theatrical presentation of. So she ended up partnering with another person and they did kind of a shared storytelling, which evolved into a small theater uh, in the school's productions. And I got to be part of that. Um, and I remember very early on my mom saying, you have more of the director's eye. <laughs> so it seems like it started from a really young age that I um, found the bug for theater. And I directed my first play in middle school uh, and then directed in high school and a little bit in college, took a little bit of a break from it in college. And then I ended up um, going to graduate school at Yale in the drama school for directing and I've been directing on and off ever since. I've taken a couple segues, uh, worked at Disney directing theme park shows and cruise lines productions um, and then came back to my first passion which was um, the, the theater uh, in, outside of, of that world, um, the live theater experience and it's been a wonderful journey. I feel so blessed to continue to work in this field and Really looking forward to that day when we're in the rehearsal hall together again. But in the meantime, this has been a wonderful experience to work with an incredible cast and um, design team and get to play with Wendy McLeod's beautiful play and funny play. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marja Mazur. If you want to learn more about International City Theater and their production of Slow Food, watch this video. When did my love of directing go from an interest to an obsession? I would say uh, it really was uh, my experience in graduate school that cemented that love. I hadn't been exposed to such a broad spectrum of work until I went to Yale. And as part of that program, I met a lot of incredible artists, uh, Tony Kushner, the Wooster Group. I saw types of work that I had never uh, imagined before and it expanded my idea of what theater could be and um, I don't always get to to do all those different kinds of work but as an audience member I love experiencing the variety of what the field has to offer from working in community-based spaces uh, to you know avant-garde productions to musicals it's just there's so much um, and I feel like there's really no substitute for being in the room together in the way that you are in the live theater. And it's crazy because it seems like that has been proven to us in the past year that although we, I certainly love film, I've worked a little bit in film, I love TV, I, I you know, enjoy those mediums, but there's, there's this thing that has happened to us in the past year, which we've, actually experienced what it's like to not be able to go out and share space and breathe together in the way that we're used to. And for those of us who are addicted to this art form, it's been challenging. We miss it. I miss it deeply. And um, yeah, that obsession hasn't gone away for me really in the 25 years that I've been working on and off as a theater director. I really wanted to to be part of ICT's uh, production of Slow Food. I had met playwright Wendy McLeod a number of years ago. We have some, some common uh, friends and, and theater acquaintances and we had gotten in touch with each other. And I really liked her writing. It's so funny and smart and um, just really, un and she's obviously so gifted as a writer. Uh, so even before I had read this particular play, I was interested in her work and I really wanted to find a way to work with her. Um, so that was a fortuitous thing because then uh, Karen Desai from International City Theater, where I had worked previously directing A Splintered Soul, uh, reached out to me and, and asked me about the play. And I thought, wow, this is, this is so fortuitous that I get to work with a playwright who I really love um, in my local hometown theater. I live in Long Beach and I really respect ICT so much and the work that they've done throughout the years. Um, you probably know they won the Ovation Award for Best Season a couple of years ago. Um, Karen is an absolutely, you know, tireless, enormously talented artist herself who just has dedicated herself 
to this company and to this community. And as a, uh, I'm a resident of Long Beach, um, and it's a community that I care about a lot. So um, in, in many levels, it just seemed like a, a really special opportunity that I couldn't pass up. I don't think there is a star. Um, it's a real three-hander. And we have a waiter um, in a Palm Springs restaurant. He's been waiting tables a long time and uh, has mixed feelings about being in this phase of his life in midlife, uh, still waiting tables. And then we have this couple that are empty nesters and they show up at this restaurant tired and hungry and the waiter doesn't seem to want to bring them their food. Uh, sounds like a, a lighter story and it is light and funny in many respects, but it also um, brings up questions of uh, what happens when we get to a certain point in our life and we can see us getting closer to the other side and asking ourselves questions about the choices that we've made. So whether, whatever choices we've made, um, whether we chose to have children or get married or um, maybe we didn't have those choices, like this waiter who is a gay man who at the time um, probably didn't have the choice to marry, for example, to have children would have been difficult. He, he and, the, and the father have a competitive kind of power dynamic in the play that I think um, is reflective of the fact that whatever choices we've made, and depending on what choices we've had, um, we may have some regrets and we may have some questions about what should come next. Um, so the couple are in a point in their marriage where they have those questions. The waiter is in a life stage. He has those questions. Um, and what sounds like it could be very heavy ends up playing out in a really comedic way around this wonderful premise that, hey, this waiter doesn't have to bring them their food. You know, they might just have to wait. So I'll tell you a little bit about the process of creating Slow Food because it really was unique. Um, we rehearsed for eight days over Zoom. So although we weren't physically in the space together, just like a Zoom class, we got to be together in a very real sense and do our table work that we would normally do, explore the writing, the motivations of the characters. But then ultimately, we did a simultaneous process in which the actors were together on Zoom so that I, as the director, could hear what was happening. But they were also recording themselves on their own phones against a green screen. And because of that, we had each actor separately recorded so that their video and audio would be clean and of greater quality than a Zoom recording normally is. Um, and then the next step of the process is our wonderful editor who is bringing it all together. So that is Mike Radicic. And uh, we're very, very grateful to Mike for doing that and our terrific actors, um, Meredith Thomas, Stu James, and Perry Ojeda. Um, just went so above and beyond the call of duty. Um, they had to navigate their props. They had to take care of their own costumes. Of course, those were provided by our excellent team. Kim DeShazo, our uh, costume designer, did a beautiful job. And um, our Patty Bryles, our, our prop master, is amazing. Um, but this is a prop heavy show and navigating all of those elements together along with their fantastic performances was such a, a challenge for the actors and they really rose to that challenge and just they've just been incredible um so i it's a very unique process something none of us had ever experienced quite in this way before but i'm so grateful to the team for what they've done and we brought in a designer antonio beach who did background designs to create virtual sets so the spaces that you'll see don't exist anywhere in the real world um, and they don't exist live on a stage. They only exist in virtual reality, um, but they look very real. And the actors are actually green screened into those spaces as if they're really sitting at those um, tables and sitting next to each other, even though COVID safety requires that they are at their own homes separate from each other. But you won't feel that way when you see the show. I also want to thank our fabulous sound designer, Dave. Dave Mickey, who has added so much in his contribution to the production. And we've had a really incredible design team come together on this show. 
uh, Antonio Beach, who did our background designs. Uh, Kim DeShazo, our costume designer. Patty Bryles, our prop master. It's been a collaborative effort with Mike Bradichich, our editor. And um, I'm just really grateful to International City Theater, to Karen Desai and her wonderful staff who have been so generous in allowing us this opportunity to create work in uh, extraordinary circumstances. Karen Desai, our artistic director, loves to say we all need a good laugh, and I couldn't agree with her more. Um, it's been a challenging year for, for all of us in different ways, um, some so much more than others, but, but we all know that this hasn't been quite the year we expected. And um, this play really is a great opportunity to laugh. Um, the, the characters are all a little bit over the top. We've got this very hungry father. We've got this, you know, kind of cranky wife. And we've got this over the top waiter. And they all, you know, comedy ensues. They each are in extreme uh, per personalities a little bit. And um, because of that, we end up having a lot of fun. One of the things that's really special about Wendy McLeod's writing is her vision and ability to see depth in characters. She is astute at uh, understanding character. And here we have three very different personalities. We have a fairly traditional father who is a an executive who runs his own company, uh, used to being in charge. His children have left the nest and now he's wondering uh, what's the purpose and meaning of his life. Uh, without that responsibility. Um, then we have the mother who is um, also has her own career and profession. She's a therapist. She's trying to smooth things over throughout the play. And there is an antagonism between the father and this wonderful, fun, uh, gay waiter who um, hasn't had the choice to have a family. And how does he feel about um, being told what to do all the time, uh, being judged maybe by for his class. Um, Wendy's so good at giving honesty and heart to these characters. They never feel stereotypical. They always feel real. But at the same time, she taps into what's funny about each personality. And um, she's just an extraordinary writer. Her language is amazing. And the rhythms of her comedy always draw you in. I can't tell you exactly what I want the audience to get out of this play because I hope that they find their own uh, their own meaning in the play on their own. But I will say I want them to walk away having had a good laugh, having experienced some joy in these challenging times, um, and maybe thinking a little bit about how to have empathy for people who are a bit different from themselves um, and how we treat each other and how important it is to treat each other with kindness and respect regardless of our differences. I really hope the Southern California theater community will come out um, to celebrate these three wonderful actors, our incredible design team, and to have a good laugh and, and celebrate um, the making of theater in extraordinary circumstances um, at International City Theater. I think in the past year, we've really had the opportunity to see how incredibly important the theater is in the fabric of our Southern California community. It's one of the few places where we can come together regardless of our age, race, class, gender orientation, um, ability, disability, <laughs> and breathe together, experience story, and come out together a little bit changed or with at least some new questions about life and our role in it. That making of meaning has seemed especially important to me in this 2020 year in which many of us have faced challenges. And I hope that all of you can come back to International City Theater and to support other Southern California theaters as we return in 2021. If you'd like to learn more about Slow Food at International City Theater, please go online to ICT Theater, purchase tickets, attend Southern California Theater, and support International City Theater and Slow Food.
Let me talk a bit about the importance of a subscriber to the theater, not only for the theater, but for the subscriber themselves. Because when you, when you subscribe to a theater for their whole season, of course, you're supporting the theater and you're getting a very good price for that as well. So you're saving money and you're also, most important, you, especially the kind of work that International City Theater does. Sometimes you've never heard of the play, you've never heard of the writer, you don't know what you're going to see. But if you've come to um, a theater company where you trust what they're going to do, it is going to be quality work. And some you'll like more than others, just like a painting, you know, you like this painting more than another in the art museum. Um, but you're opening yourself to new ideas and new experiences. And that's how we grow. And so, and then also that shared journey that you're taking with other people in the audience where that energy between the actor and the audience, because that's really the basics of theater is the actor and the audience, um, that feeds and, and um, makes a more enjoyable experience because we laugh together, we cry together, and then we learn and we grow together. And that's why subscribing to a theater is really important for individuals in your continued growth and education for all of us, and also for a theater company because they have a base of support that's going to allow us to take risks and bring in new works or new experiences or relevant plays that we think are important to our growth and our dialogue and for our society. We hope people will subscribe and um, help us continue to grow. Why should the community, the Southern California community, attend International City Theater season because I hope you'll see that it's one, it's fun um, and it's educational. And those are really important things to me. Um, personally, I really strongly believe in education. Um, I've taught college for 25 plus years. Um, and it it's really gives you a sense of community when you're at the theater and you're sharing an experience like this with others and it we can't do it without an audience so um we and we certainly want to grow beyond what we're doing now and that only happens with growing support and so we hope that people will value and appreciate the, the kind of work we're doing and promise you it'll always be quality work and it's an important investment in in the community in what we do and in this art form I am Karen Desai, the Artistic Director Producer of International City Theater. And if you'd like more information or to find out about our season of family, friends, fun, and food, or any of the productions or any of our education programs, please go to our website at www.ictlongbeach.org. Thank you.